My friends, siblings, and I co-own and operate a lonchera that serves Korean barbecue tacos. Because our restaurant's always on the move, we have to make sure we keep our patrons up to date. So I'm the person who lets our customers know through our Twitter feed, blog, and Facebook page what we're up to. So I post up straight up information regarding what stops we're rolling to, if we're running late, if we're running out of food, if we're leaving because we're kicked out by the cops again. <laughs> yeah. So in the beginning, there was definitely a struggle. We would sit up outside these clubs in Hollywood and be literally chased out by club owners and cops. And when we were finally able to find a spot that we could call home, we could barely give our tacos away. The first two days, we had done everything by the book. You know, the one that talks about location and advertising? And after two days, we decided to drop kick that book into the fire. First of all, finding that perfect location failed us. Um, we would roll up to these spots, and there'd be a lot of foot traffic, but not a lot of space for parking. And half the time when we were able to find a spot anyway, we would be chased out. As for advertising, it consisted of my sister creating these little flyers that all these people would just chuck into the trash. It's like we'd hit a wall. We were doing everything we'd read, but everything we did by the book failed us. <sighs> you know, so what we did, because everyone tells you that when you start a new business, you know, to be prepared to make a lot of mistakes. But the trouble was, was that every friggin' mistake we made was by doing things the way other people told us they ought to be done. You know? So, <laughs> we wised up. We dumped the advice. We stopped overthinking our next move. And we started listening. And then something really weird happened. Emails started coming in from Eagle Rock, Granada Hills, Rosemead, Torrance, all these little pockets in LA County that most people don't consider as part of LA County, begging us to park there. And the more we ventured out of the more obvious downtown and Hollywood area into these spots, the more we would come into contact with these incredibly appreciative customers. And after two and a half years, we have over 86,000 followers on Twitter. Over 3,000 fans on Facebook, not counting the pages independently created by fans. And over 9,000 hits a day on our website, which is pretty impressive for a local taco truck that doesn't advertise or have its own reality show. <laughs> the funny thing is, is that I only post the bare bones, straight up information you need to know on our daily schedule. So there is no witty commentary on the pop cultural landscape. There's no scathing critique from the political sphere. There's no constant promotion of new product lines or appearances we make on TV, radio, or the news. I don't retweet things. I don't use hashtags. I don't even know what they're for. We've never hired a PR firm to push our brand or begged people to follow us on Twitter. Still, you know, because of our following, I do get a lot of questions about my expertise in the realm of social media, though I am no expert in this field. <laughs> and uh, the two most commonly asked questions I get are, how did you get so many friggin' Twitter followers? And where do you think the social media landscape is going? And my answers to those questions tend to be, I don't know, and I don't know. I will say this, though, that um, social media is currently being positioned as this promotional tool that's absolutely free of charge. And if its purpose is as a promotional tool, then you better have something to promote. Whether it's a new product line, your company, a blog, or you as a personality. We forget sometimes that the original appeal of social media was to socialize via media, to connect, 
to have some kind of genuine human connection. But to be tipped off on, you know, something cool or to learn something new. And I guess my point is, is that, you know, a lot of the people who ask me the kinds of questions that I can't answer are the ones who are using social media to interact with their followers in this way, and even the personal sphere. So instead of genuine human connection, it's this endless stream of self-generated advertising. For instance, I get a lot of tweets all the time. Follow me back. Tweet about me. I'll tweet about you. Tell your followers about this event. As though having me respond to these tweets would sprinkle some magic fairy dust over their own feeds. Look, I don't study up on what's new or what's now in the realm of social media. We don't advertise, nor do we accept money to advertise product lines or unrelated events on our Twitter feed. We don't utilize any strategy or tactics to get people to follow us. Today, a lot of people have this common understanding that um, I guess what I'm trying to say is that 80% of all of our time, energy, and attention goes into making sure that our food is amazing and affordable and that we're directly connected to our customers, our patrons, and our diehard fans. The other 20% is spent on trying to make sure we actually roll to stops on time, pay ourselves on time, and have a little creative space in which we could think of ways to improve the quality of our food, um, our customer relations, and our fan service. That's it. Because that's all you need. When we first started our truck, we had two ideals, and that was to create great food at a great price. And we went about it by employing the creativity and skills of a four-star professional chef who wasn't in it for the money, and applied it to the LA Lonchera. And we knew that if we took a risk and declared a moratorium on any budget geared towards that advertising monkey machine dead set on telling you to like our tacos, something beautiful could happen. Our tacos are amazing, and we believed in them enough to allow for them to speak for themselves because we knew that we were creating a new flavor profile that Los Angeles was ready for. Had we gone by the book? Had we even lasted financially until now, doing things by the book, there would be no cult following. There would be no love left in our company. Everything that people pay attention to and admire us for and holler back at us for would not exist. So my question to y'all is, when you see that ride coming in a direction, when you find a love in what it is that you're doing, are you going to turn to the book? Or are you going to let go and see where that ride takes you next? <laughs>